Welcome back. I'm Paul Merkley. I'm co-founder of Seniors Junction. This is the second in a series of five short presentations to prepare you for our classes in music appreciation. The subject today is texture in music. And perhaps you'll say, I didn't know there was such a thing as texture in music. What do you mean by texture in music? Good, you've come to the right place. Texture is the touch and feel of music or the equivalent of that in music, like touching a fabric or feeling it and getting sensations from that. Music has something similar, and I'm going to show you what that is. So welcome. There are two textures commonly talked about and thought about, imitation and chordal texture. We'll start with imitation. Imitation just means one singer following another or one instrumentalist playing what another just played. Chordal texture, we'll look at second, but imitation first. I'm sure that many, if not most of you, sang a round when you were children. Uh, one of the most famous rounds is row, row, row your boat. One child starts, row, row, row your boat. And at that point, the second child comes in and sings the very same music, row, row, row your boat, while the first child sings, gently down the stream, and all together, you get four children imitating each other, singing at the same time, and it goes around in a circle. That's a round. The skill in making a round is having everything fit together, having it locked together, because on the one hand, you have to have everything imitate, and on the other hand, it had better sound well together. It should go well together. So I would like to play you a very famous medieval round. Some people call this the summer canon. Summer is the coming in, summer is coming. There are actually two imitations going on. Imitation between the top two voices, which have this longer text, summer is to come in. And then the second singer sings, summer is to come in. And then below them, two singers singing a very short line, sing, coo, coo, do, do, sing, coo, coo, imitation there. So you'll hear imitation at two levels. <laughs> All right, is it imitative? Yes, we've just explained why. We've got two pairs of lines. Some of you may know this, may say, Paul, I call this the Reading Rota. That's true, that's another name for it. A rota just means a round, the Latin for round. And Reading, why? Well, because the manuscript was found in the city of Reading. All right, and if you didn't hear the imitation clearly, don't worry, we've got two more examples coming. So here's our next one. Josquin de Pre, called by his contemporaries the Prince of Musicians, a very important figure we'll be talking about in a couple of classes. This is a religious piece from the incident in the Bible where the king's son rebelled against his father and took up arms against him. The son was killed in battle, and the king said, Absalom, my son, would to God I had died for thee. Absalom 
Feely Me. You will hear each voice in turn sing, Absalon Feely Me. And when the first voice sings me, you're going to hear the second voice start singing, Absalon Feely Me. And then in a minute or two, you'll hear the bass voice come in, sing the same words and the same melody. A beautiful piece written so well the way it fits together, very moving with a particular touch and feel, I'm sure you'll agree. enjoyed that as much as I did. Is it imitative? Yes, for the reasons we have said. So this is texture. This is the, the feel and touch of music just as a fabric, as a touch and feel. And we respond to that. We appreciate it. We take it in. It's part of the expression. All right. One more example, this one by the great J.S. Bach, also a religious piece. As Sister Altebund, in German, it is the old law, man, you must die. And that is imitated. So the words and music repeated and ingeniously, ingeniously written in a way that the whole is harmonious containing all this imitation. Very difficult to write like this. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Is it imitative? For sure. Imitative in a very special way. And by understanding the texture, you understand the touch and feel of the music. And you have a feeling for what that's like. I'm sure one of our faculty members is a textile artist. I'm sure she would say, you have to feel the fabric and know the touch and feel. It's the same with music. It's a very important feature. It's a very important part of the expression. All right, we've covered imitative texture. Now <clears throat> I would like to show you the opposite, which is chordal texture. Now, if all the singers and players are moving, or let's say changing their notes at the same time, it has a different effect. It has the effect we say of chords that we hear. What is a chord? A chord is any three notes played or sung at the same time. So if the effect is that of a sequence of chords of people moving at the same time without any imitation, without any, any variance in the rhythm, that we call a chordal texture. And I've chosen a Christmas carol that many or all of you will have heard and many of you will have sung. Is it imitative? No. 
all the voice parts move at the same time. Chordal texture. It's especially used for group singing uh, in situations in which the group may not be a professional choir or professional musicians. And so a simpler texture is called for. A Christmas carol is a very typical example. So now you know two contrasting textures, imitative and chordal. You not only know what those terms mean, but you know how they feel. And they know you know how they make you feel. And that's the point of all of this. I hope you'll join me for our next presentation, um, which will be on the elements of time in music, rhythm, tempo, meter, so that we get that straight. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure to do this with you. Hope to see you again soon.